This is Mrs. Hosmer and I am giving you 50 days of bell ringers for science. I also have a five minute timer on this slide. And the slides have answer keys as well. Okay, day one, a new shopping center which covers the soil habitat of worms is built. Identify the following factors in an ecosystem as biotic or abiotic. An abiotic is non-living factors in an ecosystem and biotic is living factors in an ecosystem. So for number one, you have a parking lot, number two, worms, and three, new stores. Here's the answer key for day one. Day two, photosynthesis. You have a diagram to look at and then to answer some questions. There's also a small video on the right hand side. Number one, what is the source of light used in photosynthesis? And number two, what chemical enters the leaf into the air or from the air? And here's your answer key for day number two. Day three, the water cycle. Where does most water get evaporated from? Number two, what holds 97% of all Earth's water? And number three, what happens to your body if you drink salt water? It also has a small video on the right hand side. Here's your answer key for day three. Day four, a new shopping center which covers the soil habitat of worms is built. Please answer the following questions. Number one, what will happen to the worms when the parking lot is poured? Number two, what is lost when the new stores are built? What is gained? And number three, birds eat worms. How does the new shopping center affect local birds? Here's your answer key for day four. Day five, independent and dependent variables in an experiment. Watch the experiment and tell me the independent variable and dependent variable in the experiment. So the experiment is which liquid will react the fastest to Mentos candy, Coke or Diet Coke. So if the students hit this, it's a small video on the experiment. And here's your answer key for day five. Day six, temperature. There's a thermometer for Fahrenheit. And then there's a small video on the top right hand side as well on temperatures. Number one, in which of the following temperatures would snow most likely fall? Number two, in which of the following temperatures would snow melt? Number three, which temperature would be best for swimming in an unheated pool? Number four, which temperature is warm enough to avoid wearing a jacket? And number five, which temperature is most likely to be warm enough to go barefoot comfortably? And on the right hand side are the five hearts. To, you hit the heart and then you drag it to your answer. Okay, so here's your answer key for day six. Day seven, Frosty's line graph. So it tells you the months and then the inches of snow that fell. You're gonna answer the following questions. Number one, which month had the greatest snowfall? Number two, which month had the least snowfall? And number three, which months had the same amount of snowfall? And here's your answer key for day seven. Day eight, what did I do wrong in the experiment? Please watch the video and tell me what I did wrong in the experiment. Which liquid reacts the fastest to Mentos candy, Coke or Diet Coke? And if the students hit on the question, what did I do wrong in the experiment? It's a small video of the experiment and then they're gonna put their answers in this rectangle. 
Oops. Go back. Here's your answer key for day eight. Day nine, planets. And he has a chart, length of day, the planet, and the day equal to time for complete spin in Earth hours or days. So there's a small video too on top. And then they can answer the questions one through three. So one, which planet has a day length similar to Earth? Number two, which planet had a day length about a week long? Number three, identify the planets that have shorter days than Earth. Put them in order from shortest to the longest lengths. Here's your answer key for day nine. Day 10, <coughs> excuse me, day 10, the periodic table, fill in the blanks. And I also have a small video on top for the periodic table. And here's your answer key for day 10. Day 11, rocks, fill in the blanks. There's a small video on the right-hand side at the bottom. You have a word bank, igneous rock, rock, sedimentary rock, and then you have to fill in the blanks. So a blank is any naturally formed solid in the crust made up of one or more kinds of minerals. Rocks that form when melted rock material cools and hardens are called blank rocks. Small bits of matter joined together form blank rock. Here's your answer key for day 11. Day 12, heart, true or false? Number one, your heart beats about 100,000 times a day. Number two, a child's heart is about the size of a fist. Number three, a drop of blood makes an entire trip through your body in less than a minute. So answer those true or false. And here's the answer key for day 12. Day 13, weather. Number one, what word means weather that is generally typical of an area? Number two, which climate occurs in the middle of the United States? And number three, which climate is characterized by a very wet season and a very dry season? Here's your answer keys for day 13. Day 14, safety symbols in the lab. Match the symbol to the correct word or words. And here's your word bank, flammable material hazard, toxic material hazard, and biohazard. Here's the answer key for day 14. Day 15, rocks. It has a small video on the right hand side and then you have a word bank, marble, fossil, and metamorphic. Sedimentary rocks sometimes contain blank or the remains of imprints of living things of the past. A rock formed under heat and pressure from another kind of rock is called a blank rock. A metamorphic rock that contains minerals and brilliant colors and is easy to carve is Here's your answer keys for day 15. Day 16, the scientific method and variables. There's a couple videos, one's on the independent and dependent variable, and one's on the scientific method. Number one, what is a hypothesis in an experiment? Number two, what is an independent variable in an experiment? And number three, what is a dependent variable in an experiment? And here's your answer key for day 16. Day 17, cells, animal and plant. There's also a small video if the students had animal and plant cells, the blue. 
Number one, name two things found in a plant cell that are not found in an animal cell. Number two, what is the function of chloroplasts? And number three, what is the function of the vacuole? And here's your answer key for day 17. Day 18, the periodic table. There's a small video at the top right. Fill in the chart, atomic number, symbol, and element. And here's your answer key for day 18. Day 19, planets. There's a small video on the top right. Put the inner planets in order from the closest to the sun to the furthest. And you have Earth, Mars, Mercury, and Venus. So put those in order, the ones that are closest to the sun. And here's your answer key for day 19. Day 20, human body analogies. Number one is an example, finger is to hand as toe is to foot. Number two, knee is to leg as blank is to arm. Number three, wrist is to hand as blank is to foot. Number four, a hearing aid is to ears as glasses are to blank. Number five, C is to I as smell is to blank. And number six, sack is to foot as glove is to blank. And here's your answer key for day 20. Day 21, the microscope. There's a small video on the top. There's also a word bank. Eyepiece, arm, base, adjustment knob, and nose piece. Number one, holds two or more objective lenses and can be rotated to change power. Number two, the bottom of the microscope used for support. Number three, combination of lenses at the viewing end of optical instruments. Number four, supports upper part of the microscope. And number five, locate on the side of the frame used to adjust the focus of the microscope. And here's the answer key for day 21. Okay, day 22, plant experiment. Fred put two plants outside in the sun for two weeks. He left one plant in the sun and put a black box over the second plant. He watered both plants every other day. Number one, which question was Fred probably trying to answer? Hint, state the problem. And number two, why did Fred use the box in this experiment? And here's the answer key for day 22. Day 23, hearing. Number one, what is the name of the alphabet shown? Number two, it would be useful to know how to speak using sign language if you were friends with someone who is blank. And that tells you to practice the first letters of the alphabet. And here's your answer key for day 23. Day 24, color blindness. People who are colorblind have a hard time usually telling the difference between red, yellow, and green. Are you colorblind? Number one, what is the number inside the circle? Number two, what is the number inside of the circle? Here's the answer key for day 24. Day 25, scientific method. There's also a small video on the top right. So Joan made this musical instrument science class out of tape and straws. What question was she testing in her experiment? And then you, here are your choices. A, how different lengths of straws sound when blown into. B, which kind of straw is the least expensive. C, how thicker and thinner straws sound different when blown into. Or D, how color affects the sound of a straw makes. And 
here's your answer key for day 25. Day 26, cellulose and Fahrenheit. There's also a chart with uh, both thermometers uh, with Fahrenheit and Celsius, and also um, a video showing the same. Number one, which temperature is warmer, zero degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius? Number two, which temperature is colder, zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit? Number three, at which temperature would water boil? 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 degrees Celsius? Number four, what is the normal temperature of the human body in degrees Fahrenheit? And your answer key for day 26. Day 27, make a Venn diagram of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. There's a small video on the right hand on the top. And also all the words or word bank, um, the, they move if um, the student clicks on it and drags it. And here's your answer key for day 27. Day 28, the cell. There's also a small video on the right top. True or false? Number one, the cell is the basic unit of all living things. Number two, the cell is the smallest unit of a living thing. And three, a unicellular cell is more than one cell. And here's your answer key for day 28. Day 29, living things have common characteristics. Name three of them. There's also a small video on the cell and different parts of living and non-living things, so they can watch that. And here's your answer key. All right, day 30, Louis Pasteur, it shows um, an experiment that Louis Pasteur did. There's also a small video on the top right-hand side. You're gonna answer two questions. What is the independent variable in this experiment? And what is the dependent variable in the experiment? And Louis Pasteur took two flasks and he took broth and boiled it. And then he put them in the flasks and sealed it with, on top. And then he looked a couple days later and observed the broth and it was clear, there was no bacteria growing. So then he took this flask, one of the flasks, and he cut, took the top part off so that air was exposed to the broth. And then he waited a couple days later and he looked at both of them. And the flask that had the seal on it, the broth was fine, but the flask that had air exposed to it had bacteria growing in it. Okay, and here's your answer key for day 30. And day 31, cells, tissues, organs. Again, there's a diagram and there's also a small video. Number one, what are organ systems made up of? Number two, which has a higher level of organization, a cell? or an organ. And number three, from the chart, which is the most highly organized? And here's your answers for day 31. Day 32, how to make ice cream in a bag. Watch the video, how to make ice cream in a bag and answer the following questions. 
Number one, why is this a demonstration and not an experiment? Explain. And number two, what could I change or manipulate in this demonstration to make it an experiment? And here's the answer key for day 32. All right, day 33, which boat will hold the most weight? Watch the video and answer the questions. Is this an experiment or a demonstration? Number two, what is the independent variable? And number three, what is the dependent variable? And here's the answers to day 33. Day 34, four states of matter. List an example of each state of matter. Number one, liquid. Number two, solid. Number three, gas. And number four is done for you already, plasma. An example is lightning. And here's the answer key for day 34. Day 35, fighting the flu, shot or no shot. The flu vaccine decreases your chances of catching the flu, but does not protect you 100%. However, if you get the shot and still end up catching the flu, your symptoms probably will be milder than if you had not gotten vaccinated. There are many strains of the flu virus. Each year, scientists choose the strains that they think will appear in the United States. Then a vaccine is made that contains those strains. The vaccine is given to people across the country. However, getting a flu shot will not protect you against any strain that is not in the vaccine. Number one, what is one challenge that scientists face when making the flu vaccine? And number two, does a person need to get a flu shot every year? Why or why not? And here's the answer key for day 35. Day 36, what is the Richter scale? The Richter scale measures the size of or magnitude of an earthquake on a scale of one to 10. And you're gonna answer using this scale here, okay? So zero to one, generally not felt, but recorded on seismometers, okay? So here's what you're going to look at. Determine where these fall on the Richter scale. So the first one, it tells you total destruction. Uh, most buildings are destroyed or damaged. And then number two, it says some damage to older buildings, some cracks in the pavement. And number three, most people unaware of event instruments record some mild tremors. So you'd have to figure out where it would fall on the Richter scale. And here's the answer key for day 36. Day 37, which candle will burn the longest, the white or pink? Before you watch the video, please state your hypothesis for this experiment. Then watch the video and answer the questions. Okay, so you're gonna give your hypothesis, what you think is gonna happen, and then you're gonna answer the questions. What is the independent variable in this experiment? What is the dependent variable in this experiment? Here's the answer key for day 37. Day 38, how did the water get in, onto the bowl? Number one, what is the most likely way that the water got onto, into the bowl? Number two, is this an experiment or a demonstration? So the students read, uh, Janice put a cup of water on the windowsill in the sun and covered it with a bowl. Later that day when she looked at the bowl, there was moisture on the inside of it. Here's the answer key for day 38. Day 39, blood types. So it has, um, if you have blood type, you can receive this type of blood. 
and what you can donate your blood for, which types. So number one, David has type O blood. He needs to get some extra blood during an operation. What types or types of blood can he get? Number two, if you are blood type AB, you can donate blood to people with type blank blood. Number three, which type of blood can donate to all the blood types? Here's your answer key for day 39. Day 40, lung capacity. Okay, so Michael tests his lung capacity using the equipment in the picture. He takes a deep breath and then blows all the air inside his lungs into the tube. How much air was in his lungs? Number two, which activity is least likely to be affected by lung capacity? A, skiing, B, playing the piano, or C, playing the trumpet. And here's your answer key for day 40. Day 41, fresh water. So it tells you fresh water is 2.8% of the water on Earth, and salt water is 97.2% of the water on Earth. And it tells you where that 2.8% is right here, lakes and streams, surface water and groundwater, ice caps and glaciers, water vapor in the atmosphere. So, number one, where is most of the fresh water found on Earth? And number two, what percent of the water on Earth is salt water? Here's the answer key for day 41. Day 42, corn plants. Amanda's science class planted corn seeds in different materials. They planted on topsoil, clay, and sand. Number one, what can be concluded from this experiment? Which material did the corn plants grow the tallest? Number two, what is the independent variable in this experiment? And number three, what is the dependent variable in this experiment? Here's the answer key for day 42. Day 43, what's in garbage thrown away every day? Answer the following questions looking at the bar graph. So it has the percent and then the materials, plastics, food waste, yard waste, uh, paper, other metals, glass. So number one, what percent of garbage is plastic? And number two, why is it especially important to recycle paper? Here's your answer key for day 43. Day 44, volcano. Number one, where does magma become lava? And number two, what are the three types of volcanoes? Here's your answer key for day 44. Day 45 on oxygen. There's a small video to watch. And then you have two questions to answer. Number one, how much of Earth's atmosphere is composed of oxygen? Number two, who discovered oxygen? Here's your answer key for day 45. Day 46, which liquid will expand the balloon the fastest, vinegar or lime juice with baking soda? And there's an experiment, a video, a small video, and then it says, before you watch the video and answer the questions, tell me what your hypothesis is. So number one, you should answer before you watch the video. My hypothesis is blank. My hyp and then after you watch it, you're gonna answer, my hypothesis was correct or incorrect. What is the independent variable in this experiment? And what could I change to make this into a different experiment? And here's the answer key for day 46. Day 47, endangered species. 
The polar bear is on the endangered species list since 2008. There are less than 25,000 polar bears in the world. Number one, why do you think the polar bears are on the endangered species list? Number two, what is the lifespan of a polar bear? And number three, what color is a polar bear's skin? And the students can click on polar bears and there's an article to read about polar bears. And here's your answer key for day 47. Day 48, experiment versus demonstration. There's a small video on uh, experiments and demonstrations. Number one, what is the difference between an experiment and a demonstration? Number two, give an example of an experiment. And number three, give an example of a demonstration. I'm gonna give you the answer key. Here's the answer key for day 48. Day 49, experiment review. So you're gonna look at the picture and answer the question. It has before and after, it's on a balance theme and you have two balloons that are deflated and then you have on the second picture after, you have a balloon that is inflated and one that is not. And it says, what can be concluded from the above experiment? It's either A, error has weight, B, the balloons were different weights before being inflated. C, the balance must be broken. Or D, inflated balloons weigh less than uninflated balloons. And number two, what is the dependent variable in this experiment? And here's your answers for day 49. Day 50, bald eagles. It has a chart on bald eagles hatching data, a line graph, and then you read the information. It says, there used to be many bald eagles born each year in the United States. Then there were fewer and fewer bald eagles being born. In 1972, farmers stopped using a certain spray to kill insects on their crops. Why do you think more eagles were born after 1972? And they have A, the eagles started eating the farmers' crops. B, the farmers stopped shooting the eagles. C, the insect spray wasn't hurting the eagle eggs anymore. Or D, the eagles started laying extra eggs. So you answer the following questions. So number one, I just read to you. Number two, what other animals do you think the farmers' insect spray may have hurt? And here's the answer key for day 50. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Thank you.